In this video, we dive into CLUD operation with PHP. CLUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. We'll be focusing on the core logic behind each operation, keeping things clear and concise. I will be explaining the concepts rather than getting bogged down by fancy editing. With that in mind, let's jump right in. We'll be running the website on our local machine using ZAMP. Simply search for ZAMP download the official website by Apache Friends should be the first result. There you will find a download option for different operating system. Pick the one that is right for you and follow the installation instructions. So once ZAMP is set up, locate its installation directory. This is usually your main hard drive and we'll have a folder named ZAMP. Within that folder, you will find a subfolder called htdocs. This is where we place all the code for our website. Let's create a new folder within ZAMP htdocs directory. We call it crude operation. Let's open our folder in VS code. Right click on it and select open with code. We need to open ZAMP control panel. There we will need to activate two key services. Apache and MySQL. These services are essential for running our website locally. Now let's create our database. Open your web browser and type localhost in the address bar. This will take you to the ZAMP dashboard. To access the database management tool, click on PHP My Admin. To create our database, click on the new button. Let's name it crude underscore operation. Let's create a table to store our product information. We call this table product and it will have three columns. For our first column, let's call it ID, data type to int. We also check the auto increment box to make it a unique identifier for each product. Then we are going to have a product name, which will store names of the products, and also a product image, which will store URLs for images. We use a valuable character data type for both columns because it is suitable for text data. To manage storage efficiently, we set a maximum length of 50 characters for each column. With our database up and running, it is time to connect to it from our PHP code. We will create a new file named dbconnect.php. This file will act as a bridge between our code and the database, handling the connection details. So PHP tags. By the way, if your file only has a PHP code and no HTML content, the closing tag is optional. So we are going to have a variable host, which is going to hold our host name, that is a localhost variable user, variable password, and a DB, which is our database name, crude operation, con as an object that represent our database connection, host, user, password, and DB variables. And if the connection to the database failed, we'll echo an error message that includes the specific reason why the connection failed. With that done, let's create a file which will be our landing page to show the list of the products. I will name this file index.php. I will use exclamation mark to auto-generate the HTML skeleton. Also customize page title. To prioritize adding products first, we include a link on this page that leads to the add product page. This lets us populate the database with products before we get to the stage of displaying them on the website. We we'll create a new PHP file called addproduct.php. Customize page title to add product. Since we will allow users to upload product images as well, we'll need to include encoding type to modpad forward slash form data, which allows files to be uploaded to database. We need to have an input type text and a name product name which is required also another input field for our image so product image and it's also required then uh, our submit button to be an input type submit the name add product to access our form open your web browser and type localhost forward slash your folder name in our case crude operation this will take you to index.php page. You will see a link there that says add product. Clicking this link will lead you to add product page. We'll keep things simple and focus on PHP logic behind this form without worrying about uh, styling. We now add the PHP logic to make this form functional. Incorporate a dbconnect.php to establish the database connection in our code. 
This way we can access object home in our code. Check if add product is set. Remember add products will be set when the submit button is clicked. Then I retrieve the value of the form field product name from the post array and store it in the variable product name. Check if the file input field named product image exists in the files array which indicates a file has been uploaded. We are going to retrieve the original name of the file and store it in a variable file name. Construct a destination path where the file will be stored on the server. With that said, let's create a directory to house uploaded images. We are going to move the uploaded file from its template location to the destination path, which in our case is dest underscore path. If file is successfully moved, we can now insert data to database. Prepare an SQL statement to insert new product into the product table, binding the product name and file name variables as parameter to the SQL query. This bind parameter method ensures that variables are properly escaped to prevent SQL injection. We are going to attempt to execute the prepared statement. If the execution is successful, we echo product added successfully and redirect the user to index.php. If there is an error, we print the error message as well. If file cannot be moved to the destination path, this block will print an error message indicating that. And finally, if product image field is not set, we indicate that no file was uploaded. With that done, let's test our add product feature. I will type in phone for the product name. I will click choose file and select an image of a phone from my device. Finally, I will click the add product button to submit the form. We will be redirected to index.php. Then if we check the database, we should see a new entry with our phone product added. And our phone product has been added to the database. Now that we can add product information to the database, let's create a dedicated area in the index.php to showcase them. We use a div to hold the products and give it some basic styling just to ensure things are a bit organized. To be display flex, padding, 20 pixel, and justify content, space evenly. I just noticed something. The image didn't add up in our images folder like we planned. It seems I forgot to include a forward slash after the folder name. Because of that, the script is concatenating the folder name images with the file name, accidentally renaming the image. If now I was to add a new product, for instance, let me add a television, then I'll choose an image for that and I click add product. Image now should be stored in images folder and that is the case now. I will include our database connection dbconnect.php. We place our PHP code here for fetching data from database, variable SQL to select all columns from product table. Then execute the SQL query on the database connection represented by con and store the result of query execution or variable result. If the query returns any rows, if the number is greater than zero, it means we have a root process. We will have a while loop which iterates over each row in the result set to fetch a single row as an associative array and for each call, fetch as soc moves to the next row. To display each row of data using HTML, we can use a PHP closing tag to create a separation between the while loop and the closing carry braces. This allows us to output the information from the database for each product during each iteration. We wrap every product in a div. For every row, we are going to output both image and product name. So we are going to have an image, then source images forward slash echo row product image to echo respective product image name then we're going to give it a style just height of 150 pixel then we have a paragraph which will hold our product name with that done we should see our product displayed in our browser index.php page let's add another product product name woofer we click choose file and select an image of a woofer from my device. Click add product to submit the form and that is it. We have a new product woofer has been added and is now listed on the main page. 
Now we are going to work on the delete feature. To delete a product, we create a form. This form will use the post method and include a hidden input field to submit the product ID. Additionally, it will have a submit button that triggers the delete product function in our PHP logic when clicked. We are going to check if form field with name delete product exists in the post array. Retrieve product ID from the post array and store it in a delete ID variable. We are going to execute delete query on products table and delete product with a specified ID. And in case the query fails, we terminate the script and display message query field. If delete query is successful, it will return true. Then will print a message that product deleted successfully. Otherwise, we print an error message, product was not deleted. Let us test this out by deleting this phone. And now we have success message, product was deleted. Now on to the last part that is editing product. To edit product information, we use a button that triggers the edit product function when clicked and this function will receive the product ID as argument. Function edit product with the argument product ID. We redirect user to edit product.php page and pass a parameter product ID with the value stored in the variable product ID. We'll add edit product.php file. Now back on browser, if I was to click on edit product button, we are going to be redirected to edit product.php. And if you take a closer look at the URL, you will see the product ID embedded within it. The product ID plays a vital role in our editing logic. So first we include the dbconnect.php to establish a connection with database. Declare a global product ID variable. Check if product ID parameter is present in the URL query string. If product ID is set in URL, we assign it value to the product ID variable. We construct a SQL query to select the product name and the product image feed from the product table where the ID matches the product ID. Query is executed with database connection con and the result stored in a variable result. We fetch result row as an associative array and store it in a row variable. If row has a truth value, then we set product name to row product name and um, product image to row product image. If no matching product is found, we, we print that. If product ID is not set in the URL, we echo no product ID provided. Creating a HTML form with the current product information for updating. Form action empty method post encoding type multipart form data so that we can be able to upload files. We are going to set value attribute to variable product name. This prefills the input field with the current product name. Source attribute set to path of current product name. And also our buttons. Input type submit, value, update product, text displayed on the button, then a name update product, name attribute used to reference this button in the server side. Now clicking on the edit product button should take you to edit product.php where you will find a pre-filled form with the product's existing details ready for editing. We check if update form has been submitted by looking for update product key in post array. Product name, assign it the value, product name from our form. Then product image, assign it the name of the uploaded file from the product image input field. Check if the product image field is not empty, meaning a new file was selected for upload. We define the destination path where the uploaded file will be stored. Move the uploaded file. 
from the temporary location to the destination path. If the file move is successful, we go ahead to update the database with both new product name and a product image for product with the specified ID. If file move fails, we echo the error. If no image is uploaded, we can update only the product name field for the product with the specified ID. We can execute the SQL query using the con database connection. If the query executes successfully, we output the success message product updated successfully and redirect to index.php. If query fails, we output the error message along with the error details. With that completed, we can now try updating a product. For example, let's update the this television. Simply change the name and append updated. Then click on update. Mm, that's good. Actually, it has updated. We can also update the image. Let's choose a phone image. And there you have it. The image is updated as well. Thanks for watching. If you found this informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to support my work in helping you.